In this video we're going to try and understand the number E and why it always occurs in nature. So we know um, we know 2 to the power of x looks something like this. So this is 2 to the power of x. Uh, we know 3 to the power of x looks something like this. So this is 3 to the power of x. Well there's a special base where it's in between 2 and 3. Um, there's a base E in between 2 and 3 in such a way that when you differentiate it it would be its exact same self that's the special property of the number e uh, so there's a base here when you differentiate it so let's say you've got a graph like this where you differentiate it it will be its exact same self we, we are going to try and understand why this number always occurs in nature so for example let's say you've got an island uh, with 80 with 80 rabbits on this island um, so so at time zero um, there are 80 rabbits on this island uh, we would use this to model um, the population growth as time ticks away so one uh, sorry this should be years so one year one year the population is this much two years it would be this much and so on why is it that we use base e why don't we use uh, why don't we use two to the power of whatever here or three to the power of whatever? Why 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 is it that we always use, we always use the number e? Why not two to the power of whatever or three to the power of whatever? So here's another example. Let's say you're your detective, your detective, and you found a dead body. Now the uh, the body temperature of an average person is roughly. 37 degrees Celsius room room temperature is roughly 23 degrees Celsius so when when a person dies at time zero um, the body temperature is 37 as time ticks away the uh, the body temperature falls to room temperature so um, so if you're a detective you come along measure the body temperature uh, let's say it's somewhere around let's say this is 30 here so you can figure out that the body has been dead for two hours so why is it that we use e to model this why not 2 to the power of minus t or 3 to the power of minus t why do we always insist on using the number e and here's another example let's say um, a bank here uh, gives you 12 percent interest um, and then you put four hundred dollars in here. So at time zero, um, the the amount that you have in the bank is four hundred dollars. And then as time ticks away, as time ticks away, the amount of money in your bank is given is modelled by e. Why is it that we use e? Why not use two to the power of um, t or or three to the power of t? Why do we always insist on using the number e? Um, it turns out, well. As time goes on, you, you see why. Um, but in, in, in order for you to fully understand the number E, I need you to understand this. I need you to recognize this. Um, if, you, if, you, um, if you truly want to understand it, you must understand this thing here. You must recognize it. And then I, I also need you to, uh, to know that um, when you log, uh, let's say log base 3 or 3 to the power of 7, I need you to know that in a way, in a way, these two, they cancel each other out, leaving you with seven. I need you to know this, and uh, I need you to know that when you have five to the power of log base five of six, in a way, these two, they cancel each other out, leaving you with six. And then I also need you to understand the concept of limits. So remember, limits, let's say uh, you've got a y equals x squared here the limit as x heads towards 3 so this is 3 the limit as x heads towards 3 is well I need you to understand the concept of, of limits so I need you to understand all these in order for you to truly understand it now if, if you want to um, well l l let me give you a rough um, a silly example um, of the number why the number e occurs um, in this example it is silly because um, you don't fully understand it for you to fully understand the number e you need to understand these things first okay so let me give you um, this silly example you um, it's, it's, it's a silly example because here you've got a bank where they give you an interest rate of 100 percent and um, and let's say you put uh, initially you put a dollar into this bank account um, so after 
it's, it's a silly example because um, we insist on the interest being 100% and we insist on you putting one dollar in here but the reality is that it doesn't matter what you um, what you put in here let's say you put four hundred dollars in here it doesn't have to be one hundred percent it could be uh, it could be twelve percent interest eventually it will lead you to the number e but um but in order to fully in order for you to fully understand why this is you need to understand you need to understand you need to understand this okay but but in in this example here which i'm about to give you you uh, you you don't fully need to understand that thing you can just it, it gives you a rough indication of the number e so let's say let's say with this silly example you put one dollar into the bank so um so your whole amount is one dollar so this is one dollar here um if the bank gives you 100 percent interest each year then at the end of the year so you've got 100 pieces here 100 percent uh the bank is going to give you 100 percent so at the end of the year you will have two dollars now let's say you uh, you compound it twice a year so instead of doing once uh instead of doing once uh in the whole year here you compound it twice so uh remember the bank's giving you 100 percent interest so there are 100 pieces here um so 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 this is um this is at the start of the year this is six six months through so this is six months through and then this is one year this is at the end of the year so six months through you here you've got 100 pieces halfway through the year you're going to get 50 percent so this is 50 percent so you're going to have this times this to give you this so this this is amount that you have halfway through the year and then uh, and then and then at the end of the year this becomes your new 100 percent here so don't forget you got a uh, you got 100 pieces here the bank's going to give you 50 pieces for doing nothing so you've got an extra 50 pieces so you so the amount that you have in the bank would be this times this that will then give you this so you so the amount that you have in the bank at the end of the year would be this much by the way this is slightly more than the two dollar we had earlier okay so so instead of doing it instead of doing it twice instead of doing it twice a year let's do it every month so at the start of the year you have one dollar so um so one month later one month later this is your one dollar here one month later um you would have to do uh, uh one plus one over twelve uh, so it would be this times this to give you to give you this so so at the end of the month if you compound it tw uh, 12 times a year in the first month you will have this amount you have this amount one over uh you have this amount here so one times this so this is this is after the first month and then uh and then the the second month second month this would then this thing here would then become your new one hundred percent and then you 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 compound it again so it would be another one over twelve so uh so the amount that you have after after month two would be this times this so that would be one times so this is your initial one dollar times uh this thing well it's going to be this times this so that would be hang on that would be your one dollar times one plus one over twelve to the power of two because this is exactly the same as this so you're just going to square it you're just going to square it so this is the amount that you have in your account after after month two and then it's dot 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 to month 12 to the 12th month um so so um so it would be this times this so after 12 months you're going to have this much in your account so let me summarize let me summarize so if you put one dollar into a bank that gives you 100 percent if you if you compound it once a year you're going to have two dollars if you compound it twice a year, 
you're going to have this much. So um, so you are getting slightly more money if you compound it twice a year. If you compound it every month, which is 12 times a year, you're going to have this much. You're going to have this much. Notice that um, if you compound it twice a year, you will get this. If you compound it uh, every month, you're going to get this much. Because de we're dealing with money, we are just going to look at two decimal places. Well, here, from here to here, you are getting slightly more money. You are getting slightly more money. So the point here is that if you compound it more often, you're going to get more money. If you compound it every week, if you compound every week, hang on. If you compound every week, it would be one over fifty-two weeks in in a year. So you 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 get your one hundred percent, and then you cut out into into fifty-two pieces, and then well, if you compound it every week, you're going to get this much here. So every month you're going to get this much. Every week you're going to get this much. So you get you you're getting slightly more money. You're getting an extra an extra eight cents. Um, if you compound it every day, then it would be th divided by 365. Well, you're going to get slightly more money. So the more you compound, the more you uh, you will earn. If you do it every hour, you will get this much. You will get this much. If you compound it every minute, you will get this much. You will get more money, but um, but but it won't be that much more because from from every hour you would get. Um, you would get less round off to you would get two dollars seventy two cents um if you do if you compound it every minute you would get two dollars and seventy two cents you are getting more money uh theoretically you are getting more money but not that much more but in in real life you won't notice a difference because we are de in real life we are dealing with two decimal places we don't care about you making more money around this region here. Um, so, so the more you compound, the more money you earn. If you do it every second, this is how much you earn. This is how much you you earn. Um, the the point here is that the point here is that no, notice that um, that if if you do it every second, it would be this much here. So notice that this bubble here is getting bigger and bigger if you can, if you compound it more and more. This thing here gets bigger and bigger. So if you compound it more and more, well, the point is that the amount that you will get will be the number e, and and it turns out that um, this is the definition of e. So as time goes on, I will explain where this thing comes from. But this here is the definition of e. So it turns out that this thing here is very similar to this. This thing here is very similar to this. So as as x gets bigger and bigger, this is as x heads towards infinity. So as you compound it more and more, so as you compound it more and more, it will head towards e. The point here is that um, we've got a scenario where you have an interest of 100%, and then you put a dollar in here. But in reality, you won't. Uh, you, you get given a weird interest. Let's say 12%. And uh, you won't put one dollar in there. You will put, let's say, four hundred dollars in there. Eventually, it will still lead you to this. Uh, and as time goes on, I will explain why we would use this e. Okay, so that's that's a uh, that's that's in the next video.